Friday. Free Stop 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 Friday. Oh, hello, hello. What's, What's going up? on, ladies? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to an exquisite episode of Old Dirty Basement. Yeah. Yeah. Trying something new. Yeah. Friday freestyle. Mm. That was freestyling with that. Yeah. <laughs> I see in a, in a regular a regular episode you don't get none of that. Nope. That no. stuff. That's that's freestyle. We're breaking it, it down, boogie down style. Mm. Can, yeah, this is exciting, Dave. We we've never freestyled like this. Well, I figured with the holidays coming up, you know, Christmas, New Year, all that good stuff, throw an episode together, something fun. People seem to like when we get off track sometime. Yeah, they're figured, always fun. They're yeah. always fun. Yeah. So this entire episode will be us. Completely having, having off fun. the tracks. There yes. is there is nothing. There's no script. There's no nothing. It's just three dudes talking. Yeah. Speaking of talking, uh, how how was you guys' day today? Anything good? Anything good happen? Can't complain. No, nah, I Tip- could typical, complain. But what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Typical Wednesday. Did we all work today? I went to work today. I did a full did. day. Yeah, I did. I never stop working. <laughs> Constantly working right now. Mm. <laughs> There's that. <Yeah. laughs> the gift that keeps giving. Here, right? here, the money rolling in. Yeah. Right. Shh, it's money rolling. Mm. Yeah, but uh, so yes. what's up with you guys? What's what's going on? What's uh, what's striking your fancy these days? Yeah, so Matt, why don't you start us off with uh, with, with what? With your topic. My top. Um, hmm. So many topics, but uh, one one kind of jumped out at me like a shark jaws in particular. Mm. Not not <laughs> the actual movie, but like I'm just, just think of that like a, like a shark jumping out at me. Right. But it wasn't a shark; it was a clown. Yeah, wrinkles. Yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> I watched it last night. Oh, this it, it, the documentary is really cool. Like, what's that? Netflix, right? It's on. Um, you can catch it on Peacock. Okay, I've always I always just say Netflix Prime as well. I checked on Netflix, and because uh, I thought you said Netflix initially, that's all I do say. Like, it's yeah. <laughs> just, it, you can find it eventually. It's, it's funny. Netflix will, if you put that in, it's not there. It'll just send you other stuff you might like. You know what I mean? But I found it on Peacock. And also Prime as well. I watched it on Peacock. Did you ever look at like your uh, stuff you might like, like the algorithms they catch on like your, say your Peacock or your 2B yes. compared to stuff like your wife would watch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. It's pretty different. Yeah. You look at the, well, so if you're using the same, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. You're, you put it all together. It's like, what the, what do I give a shit about a British baking show? What do I give a mm, shit about exactly, the, exactly. The, the real housewives of some big town? Hotlanta. Right. Right. But yeah. yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I know when my kids are on, like, like maybe my Netflix or something, like, Dad, what's this movie here about, like, something killing people or, I don't know, <laughs> these murders and, like, right. three Gacy episodes and Ted Bundy. That's all my stuff is, basically. Yeah, it's all, so it gets all the, they think we're, like, trying to be a serial killer or something mm-hmm. from, a, from you know, just, just what we do for a living. You can learn. So is yeah. that, did you know about wrinkles at all? I did not. So I overheard Matt, I believe it was a week or two ago, mentioning the topic of wrinkles. Like, hey man, I came across this thing. It's the wildest thing. It's some creepy ass clown that rolls around town, you know, prompted by parents to do this, to scare the shit out of their kids. Now I'm sure I'm ruining the story, Matt. No, no, no Matt, not or at Dave, all. Dave, like, you know, walk, walk us, uh, walk all of us through who in the hell is wrinkles the clown. Well, it's not even like, like a walkthrough, like this, this guy he started off, he does this video with, with his, um, I don't know if it's his daughter or somebody in the family, you can tell, cause they, they have it scripted, but they just, these kids were seeing this guy wrinkles, the clown. He would come out of this underneath this, uh, trundle bed. Yes. And he kind of pushes away and it looks like this actual clown, like the way they had it, it's like grimy and oh, yeah, like a closed circuit television camera. That, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, like he lays like a little st- sock puppet near this girl and like shuts the camera off. So these kids, seen this wrinkles the clown guy and they start freaking out well he had like promotional stuff made up stickers with his phone number and flyers and he'd put them up all over town down in florida see that that's funny you say that because i actually have his number written down and i don't know if we could try to call it to see if we get his voicemail (laughs) or if like that i'm i mean i'm sure you could do you want to actually like try it try it i can can try it i mean it's up to you yeah you have at it and you use your phone so he can call you back put it on speed yeah because yeah i don't want (laughs) Actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like it'll go into this in that database. (laughs) (laughs) 
Then well, I'll, pretty, I'll end up losing my, like, I'll have no money in my account. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I'll be like, a wrinkles got gotcha, you, baby. I mean, you can say the number maybe on if anybody wants to. Yeah, the, the number is anywhere if you want to try it. Uh, but, yeah, I kind of thought what you guys just said, it makes sense. Yeah. Or right. else every, yeah. But the number is 407. What area code is that? Is that Florida? That's Florida, yeah. Okay. 407-734-0254. Mm. So this is a dude who is a dresses up as a creepy clown and he's engaged by whomever he's hired by whomever to basically scare the shit out of kids. Yeah. So what he would do is you could have him a lot of times it's just the call itself. So if the kids are acting up, the parents will put it on speakerphone and call wrinkles. And then all of a sudden the kids like, Oh, I'm sorry. And they'll cry. The kid like, starts no, going nuts. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know? And then, and then the parents will be like, all right, well, he or she's acting better now, so hopefully we don't have to call you back. And, uh, yeah, but it's gone to the point where parents would give him a couple hundred dollars, correct? Yeah, he would um, – well, the way they had this documentary done, it was showing this guy that was, like, homeless. He lived in, like, a – what oh, that, was like a the old guy. VW or something like that? It was, like, a Dodge uh, conversion van nice. type thing. Like, not even a conversion van, but one of those big white vans with, like, a stove in the back. You know what I'm talking about? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Like it, a camping van, I guess. Yeah, camping say. van. But they try to make it like real creepy. There's this like old guy with white hair and he's like sweating all the time because he's yeah. in Florida right. in a conversion van, like eating eggs and, and drinking like a natty ice. And um, so they're, they're trying to make the documentary out to be this guy, but it's not. It's an actual real guy that does this, but he didn't want his name or his face to be seen because of all the calls he gets and stuff anyway. He, he had a voice kind of like the clown from um, Simpsons. Krusty. Krusty. Yeah, didn't you think he kind of sounded like that? Yeah, Herschel, a little bit. Herschel Krustovsky. Is that his real name? That is his real name. <laughs> we want Crunchy. Right. We want Crunchy. Do you, you remember that episode? I do. That's a good one. But um, yeah, he kind of, or, or that and Frank Rizzo, if anybody knows oh, who yeah. Frank Rizzo From, is. From uh, Jerky Boys. Yeah, he'd be like, yeah, kids, uh, hey, hey, your parents just called me. I'm going to come over here and eat you, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yep. then, but when the kids would hear, like the parents would call and the kids would hear this guy's voice and they'd just get freaked out and start going nuts. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, they had like a lot of kids on there being interviewed. Did the, these kids would, would, uh, try to call wrinkles themselves. One kid was, you see that like 11 year old that was obsessed with clowns mm -hmm. and, uh, he, he himself would dress up like a clown and, and he's going to be one on, on one of our other shows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think down the road. <laughs> he, he was there. Here's my wrinkles mask and here's my knife that I got at the, at the store. Look at this. How I'm going to show my dad here. I'm going to kill my dad and yeah. we're going to watch <laughs> he, this. He was like, well, if it was me, what I'd do is I'd hide <laughs> under here and then I'd come up and climb up on the bunk and then I'd, uh, you know, make some noise and, and do like the kid was kind of demented sounding, you know what I mean? The stuff that he wanted to, I mean, it wasn't too crazy, but he was just way obsessed with these clowns. Mm. But, but then, uh, then they had people that were against wrinkles because they were like, which I think these guys are weirder than, than an actual wrinkles character. Like the ones that are real clowns or try to, Oh, that, those guys. Yeah. yeah. He's like, look, I like to go to parties and make unicorns and, and mm. balloon puppets. But yeah, they, th those guys are like the weird ones, I think. They were showing clown culture, like from back in the day, like, you know, the different kind of clowns. What was that one where they, it was like a puppet show over in England? And there was, a, that was one of the first. Punch. Punch? Is that what yeah. it was? was one of the first. Punch and Judy. That's mm. it, yeah. yeah. That, they said that was one of the first, like, evil clowns that, and the kids, like, ate it up and loved it. Mm. But, Which Punch uh, till today, like, that. That clown is like big with the punch cigars. He's still like their their symbol. Mm. But then there's like, but then they started making clowns like you like uh, killer clowns from outer space. Love that, so, one, yeah. yeah. And uh, I it, still have yet to watch it. Yeah. I'm gonna get there. I promise. I'll get there. I just got a killer clowns T-shirt actually. Really? Yeah. When I, we were at the down at the mall at the uh, Park City Mall. Yes. Yeah, so was that like a Spencer's gifts or? It was at Spencer's. Yeah. What's yeah. the other one? Spencer's and where do the other the other gothy kids go? Uh, uh, hot, hot topics. topics. Hot topics. Hot topic, yeah. If you want to get any like uh chains on your jeans or anything. That's on it. your Janko jeans. Janko, that's right. <laughs> that's it's a good place to go. I was in there with my son, he was looking around at stuff and I saw they were like buy two t shirts for uh hundred and forty seven dollars. Yeah. Get one free. Dang. Yeah. I'll pass. But no, this documentary is like I thought it was pretty interesting. I mean it, it's like an hour and twenty minutes. Um, I watched most of it. I think I missed like the last 10 minutes. My wife was like, she was like, who the hell would ever do that to their kids? And they even had a, uh, like a psychiatrist on there. It was saying like, if you were to do that to a kid, like how you would screw them up for life and all that, like to use. I don't uh, understand that. But uh, I mean. I do. I, I, I can understand that to an, to an extent. I mean, think about it. Now, when we were kids, just a little side topic. You know what? I'll get back to this. I'm sorry, Dave, I cut you off. No, I was saying, I think I know where you're going with this, but I know like, um, 
like you think about things that even like I'm just trying to think of an example. I mean that you terrorize kids with different things. Look at the Halloween time. I mean, sure. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I get it. It's a little different because mm-hmm. this seems even more real. So, so, but you walking around in, in a Mike Myers costume standing there on a corner on Halloween, how is that any different? Or how is us being afraid of Jason or Mike Myers any different than these kids in Florida being afraid of wrinkles? Of so that's a random act of one dude not being prompted by anyone else. This guy, this wrinkles the, the jerk off, is being <laughs> yeah that's how he talks yeah like that he's, he's like, yeah, these kids are jerk off. he's he's being you know engaged or approached or whatever by these kids parents with the intent of the parents to scare the shit out of their kids yeah it's like uh three o'clock high yeah yeah i don't know man that's so, uh, where i was going to go earlier is you know how there's the random traumatizations right so think about when we were coming up some of the shit that we came up with one in particular belts no. Yeah, <laughs> oh, look, I'm all for paddling. Don't right. get me. I love paddling. That's a paddling. <laughs> uh, uh, the never ending story. Oh, mm-hmm. the movie? The movie. Yeah. So, what did we see in that? We saw not just a whole planet die and everybody on it die. And this is a kid's movie, but we saw specifically a Treyu's horse just get drown in this big in the tar pool thing. of tar yeah like this is a kid that just lost his best friend his horse his favorite thing in the whole world like that's a that's messed up man it's traumatized that, hell yeah if you're a little kid watching that that's gonna scar you man no i agree i know there's maybe a lot not of as much as wrinkles to jerk off but sur- surely it, to some extent i mean you think you're right because there's a lot of movies as a kid that terrorized me you know what i mean or shows or stuff that like stuck with me for days but i guess with that well, like, that's like the exorcist i mean well, i yeah, couldn't but you weren't i guess with that you you weren't i was a kid but it wasn't something like but i don't know i think the exorcist wasn't meant for kids to watch mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. but i'm just saying like like growing up catholic you kind of had like wrinkles the clowns kind of like the devil right like, you know what i mean you go to that's confession because you don't want like the devil to to take you to hell right it's kind of like the same thing that, like your, that, your that's parents a, are, yeah that's santa claus thing. santa claus you're, you know what i mean like you're not being good hey santa santa knows what you guys are doing or, they have a whole song about it or over in europe krampus yeah krampus you don't want krampus taking your shoes yeah, yeah. krampus is a creepy dude krampus is but that's what girls got i agree before with, the periods matt i agree with you to an extent especially <laughs> yeah. when you invoke the, the concept of the church it's just simply if you're bad you're going to go see the devil. Yeah, the mm-hmm. devil's going to come and get you, and you got a nice warm place for you down there where it's burning and hot. Sometimes it's, it's you, the need same a, thing. you need a little fear to keep everybody in line, you know, I guess. But but they know, have it, parents on there. The, the guy was saying, you know, am I going to tell my kid if he, they're misbehaving, they're freaked out by this thing. So, hey, I'm going to give Wrinkles a call. You know, he's going to come eat you. I'm fine with that. You yeah. know what? I'm, I'm, at, I'm, I'm converted. I'm fine with that. <laughs> All right, I'm glad. Now, yeah. despite Wrinkles the Clown church. being a creepy dude, uh, you know, he's a jerk off, but it, right. what he's doing is, I'm guessing, effective. Keeps these kids in line. I say go for it. So, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the documentary yet, we're going to talk about something here at the end, I guess. Uh, but Creepy got shot. No, no. Or, so I'm sorry, wrinkles. During, this docu- <laughs> during the documentary, they portray, you think you're seeing wrinkles the mm-hmm. whole time, and it's this older guy in his 60s and stuff, but you, you come to find out it was just an actor, and the actual wrinkles, the clown... Is actually much younger. Yeah, I think he's in his forties. Well, they didn't really Late say 30s, for sure, maybe. but he, they still nobody has his identity or anything. But he was like blacked out. You know how they do that, like witness protection stuff. Sure, and the voice has changed. Sure. And, and yeah, he, like he, the voice has been changed. Yeah, for, yeah. So maybe was, it's maybe it's Banksy. It might be. Could yeah. be Banksy. Is that that artist guy? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought <laughs> that was. Same I thought that was Michael Jackson's. Uh, his his um, monkey monkey, monkey yeah. wasn't it Banksy? No, it was uh, his monkey's <laughs> name was Bananas. No, it was not Bananas. It was uh, Sweetness Coke Bubbles Bubbles. bubbles. Thank bubbles. you. It was bubbles. Mm-hmm. No, but a Banksy, right? Like one of those, like couple mil for an original. I mean, they you're, you're removing concrete to do it. That that reminds me. You remember blowing bubbles when you were a kid? Remember that? <laughs> remember that? <laughs> I'm sure Michael Jackson might. Nah, that's what I was gonna, the guy, yeah. Yeah, it's a joke. Oh. One guy at work loves that joke. Actually, it's shallow throat. He loves telling that joke. Mm. But uh, yeah, Wrinkles the Clown. You want yeah, a joke? That, I, that, I heard one the other day. It's, it's real quick. Uh, why why can't you hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? <laughs> well, I don't know. Because the P is silent. <laughs> wow. Nice. I like that. Yeah, that's good. It's good for the kids. You've got, yeah, yeah, you got yeah. young kids out there. That's That's a good one for them. But anyway, yeah, so yeah, Wrinkles is what one of the topics I had to discuss. Um, I like it. Yeah, if, if you guys get a chance, watch the documentary. I just think it's it's pretty neat uh, that somebody's out there making a living 
off of how how Zap saying to being a jerk off. He's yeah. being a, he's a, being a jerk off, but no, he's being a creepy dude with purpose. But parents, the, yeah, parents, parents pay the guy to stand in like the yard and like look over the 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 shrubbery and like these kids start yelling and screaming and he grabs the phone and he like cuts it off at that so every every time the dad's like hey you were bad remember this guy came to the house mm-hmm. he said the kids are like angels we got to get a wrinkles one of the posters or whatever to put up be cool for the basement sure the new, the new setup why not well i'm gonna <laughs> the collage I'm, I'm gonna try to borrow somebody's phone so i can actually call and maybe i'll tell them to listen call from a pay phone yeah they still have those. no i don't know do we no. call from an office phone yeah i think they have pay phones in That's um, it but you have to use your credit card, like in uh, yeah. airports or whatever. They might. You don't want to. You don't want to swipe your credit card in one of those things. No, no. But yeah, what what else? What else do we got? So let's go to Zap. What do you got, Zap? I got nothing, man. I got nothing of import. I no. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have something. I'm, so I, I was just reading the news this morning, and I saw See, that's that. Good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I like it. Recently, um, Tesla recalled nearly all of their vehicles. Almost all of them in the United States to fix an uh, an autopilot monitoring system. So there's an autopilot thing. Autopilot. Autopilot. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's some kind of autopilot monitoring system. So Tesla had to call them all back. Now Tesla is a thing. They are people. So I, for one, am going to tell you, and I don't care, man. I love, love, love. What's his name? Elon uh, Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. I love that guy, man. I think he's cool as shit, man. Oh, yeah. Good for him. Good for Elon. Everything he's doing, good for him. He's making it. He's making it. it. The guy owning it. <laughs> owning it. I think he owns and makes everything, yeah. pretty much. So, however, I could not care less about a particular product. He is behind the Tesla automobile. 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 The at, at this point, this stage of the game, the the concept of an electronic vehicle and the whatever zero carbon footprint and all of that horse shit is just laughable to me it's absolutely laughable why do you ask well here is why why <laughs> why why you say <laughs> okay why yes why <laughs> the battery the, the so uh, every this obviously to completely electronic vehicle it, it has to have a battery those are lead cell right yeah yeah they're d cells d cells yeah you need okay. a lot of a modern, lot of d's modern day boom box a lot of d's yeah. so the the modern the the Tesla battery the the Model Y bad battery as chance would have it so to manufacture one of these things you need twelve tons of rock you end up going through twelve tons of rock to find enough lithium for it five tons of cobalt minerals whereas it's it, cobalt itself is a byproduct of processing copper and nickel ores mm-hmm. uh, you need three tons of nickel ore to again refine that down to nickel twelve tons of copper ore. 441 pounds of aluminum, steel, and or plastic. For one battery, you're talking? One battery. Wow. And these these numbers are coming right off the top of your head. Right off the top of my head. That's insane. (laughs) 112 pounds of graphite. So in order to obtain some of this stuff, you need to move 250 plus tons of dirt to get your resultant for your battery. 26 and a half pounds of lithium, 30 pounds of nickel. 48 and a half pounds of manganese and 15 pounds of cobalt. Wow. So I can promise you, I can promise you, it's not manuel labor that's doing that. You're using huge, tremendous machines that are doing this thing. One machine in particular, the Caterpillar Series 994 Earth Mover, or its equivalent, consumes on average... 22 gallons of diesel per hour. That's now, the one that has like six wheels that are like the yeah, size of dude, yeah. the these, old dirty basement. Dude, these these are the ones that are the size of like two houses put together. Okay, okay. Yeah. When they're actually functioning, like strong, strong functioning, mm-hmm. they're burning 60 gallons an hour. That's at their peak. Again, this is for, this is all, all in the name of electric vehicles. So what's great about this, the bulk of the necessary materials necessary to manufacture these batteries come from Give it a guess. What? Gas. gas. Petroleum. No, the, the materials <laughs> to create these batteries, where they're, they they come from. They, China. They, that's correct. They are manufactured either in China or they, they, the ore is going to come from Africa. Now, after all of that, plus all of the manufacturing necessary to put all of that shit together, mm-hmm. one gets a 1,000-pound battery and a zero-emissions car. But all so, that stuff that may get. Correct. So essentially what Tesla has done is front loaded all of the carbon completely negative. I mean, burning that shit like it's going out of style just to make this things for to sell to people and say, 
Oh, no, no. You're, you're doing the planet a favor. It takes, now this is the best part, and this is, the, this is why I got to hand it to Elon Musk. Man, he's got these people just suckered into buying this shit. But that's what I'm saying. Isn't that Elon Musk just showing the world how much of a dick he is? No. He's like, he's like look at this, man. You guys are out here thinking I'm doing all this for the planet. No. And, and he's that. just sitting back laughing. No, not at all. He's not at all saying that I'm doing this, that, and the other thing for the planet. He's convinced people to convince themselves that, yeah, that buying this car. That's what I mean. Like he, he, is, he gets off on knowing that he's, it's laughable to him that I think that this guy is just like, look what these people are buying making me what is he like the third, fourth, fifth, whatever, how many is richest that, man um, in the world? I'll make is, this a little is, is clear. That, is a majority of his fortune off Tesla or is it off of other so things? He made his big nut off of PayPal. Oh, okay. he, he came up with PayPal, sold that, took and that, moved, it into, moved into Tesla, moved into SpaceX. Did yeah, this SpaceX, SpaceX is, is a big one. one. But yeah. now Elon Musk aside, so I just use Tesla as the example because the data is out there. Mm -hmm. There are any of the auto, automobile, auto manufacturers, they make electric cars. Like that's a thing. Right. Everybody's making battery powered electric cars. I mean, you got the, the Chevy Toyota, does, the, the Toyota, Chevy, yes, all everybody. Yeah. So, to be clear, it is not just Elon Musk. I am just picking out Tesla because they've got a big battery and the data is out there readily available. So, after all of that, after all the machines and all of the bullshit and everything you did, it takes seven years for that battery to be offset everything. To, to offset everything. Wow. That is to say, <laughs> it takes seven years for somebody to not have to buy gasoline. That's just to not buy gasoline. That has nothing to do with the electricity you needed to get it in there. And what makes electricity, I'm telling you, is more than water. I'm sorry, it's more than air power, and it's more than whatever else, solar. Windmills. I mean, you're burning coal. You're burning stuff, something. You're making something hot to, to turn turbines to make electricity. So, yeah, it's all just, it's so laughable to me, absolutely laughable. But go on. Please, enjoy your electronic vehicles, electric vehicles. <laughs> You're surely doing the earth a favor. Good for you. Uh, whatever feels good, man. So what's what's your take on solar power then? You're, you're cool with solar. I, I, I mean, it works. It certainly yes. works. It's not strong enough or it does not generate nearly enough power necessary to do what it, it should be doing or what we would expect it's, it to do. Yeah, because yeah. you, you go around, um, like you take a train anywhere or whatever, you see these fields just full of like solar full of panels. It. Again, suckers. And, and that's the whole thing. It's like, well, what exactly is that running? And then you, you go through and you look up and you see like power plants. You're like, ah. Well, they try to get them like in, our, in our neighborhood. They want you to put them on your house and do all that. Oh, you mm -hmm. can do this. Suckers. You know, it's like, you get kickbacks. So there is a thing. And that there, I know a few people who have done it. Like you can coat your smart play. Do it if you're building. If you are not building, it might not be as smart. Like you're not going to get the cost benefit out of it. But. What you what you do is you basically get these, I don't want to call them carbon credits, but they're credits you offset against. Like, you're generating power by virtue of solar. Yes, yeah, that is sell, a thing. Sell it back. It sounds that like something out of exists. Star Wars. Like, you have eight carbon credits. That's right. Like <laughs> yeah, you, can, right. You, can sell, you can use that to offset your electricity because you're, you know, you're either sending it or receiving it or you're reducing the amount of drag on the, on the, the grid or whatever the hell. I, I'm no scientist, but. Right. So that get is you, a thing for you. sure. It is absolutely a thing. But look, man, sun goes down. Sometimes it gets cold whatever and when ai takes over the world and we you know darken the sky so they can't they can no longer run on solar power and they, they're starting to use people as batteries that was a matrix reference <laughs> uh yeah forget your solar Plug power it's over next. see yeah. why we don't really need to be concerned with any of this nope. actually nope it, it's like the, the we won't be around is that no, just, yeah we're a blip <laughs> in the radar man think about yeah. this stuff yeah. like what what zap was saying i mean makes 100 percent sense but it's just when you're living in a place like how crazy the world is today and people like, like you said, oh, I'm getting an electric car because, you know, I don't believe in, you know, the emissions and I don't believe in putting all that harmful stuff into the atmosphere. And like Zap saying, people buy into that. They're like, that's, that sounds like the greatest thing in the world. Yet all we're doing is just destroying our planet even more. Agreed. Yeah. Look, well said, Matt. But I also agree with what you would said that we are just a blip. We are. We're a blip. We, we don't even count. We, and especially now us and our close to 50. Compared, no, let's think of what puts CO2 or whatever the scientists say is a bad thing to go into the air to hurt the ozone or whatever. Compare the bodies of people to, I don't know, a volcano, uh, 
all sorts of natural disasters that put all of this shit into the air that we have zero, and I mean zero control. We are ants. We are gnats. Mm -hmm. We are nothing. We are absolutely a drop in nothing bucket. Polar shift. Yeah, on this on this little ball that's floating in a universe that's been around for billions. That's with a B. Car doors go billions like of years. We are. One day we're we're gonna wake. We're gonna be dinosaurs, people. And who else? I don't know what's going to take over at this time, but we'll get good miles per gallon. Though. Yes, we'll have the cars yeah, will be insane. Yes, you know you got to have faith though. Sometimes mm. that was informative, Zap. That was really that good. Was good. I like that. All, yeah. I just that was like in the head. That was all in the head. All of this That's crazy <laughs> all off the dome. All right yeah, off the dome. Right. <laughs> all of this thanks to Tesla recalling nearly all of their vehicles in the U.S. to fix an autopilot problem. Wow. Thanks, Tesla. Yeah. Wait, did you have a computer for those numbers? Uh, did you, did a computer calculate them for me? No, like I looked over there. I was like, I thought all this shit was like, <laughs> no, no, no. He has. I was like, just you... now seeing my laptop. Over yes. There? I was like, how do you know? It's like 140. I said, there's no way you know that. What the but hell no, is that's, a gigawatt? That's insane. 1. That's, 1. that's gigawatt. fantastic. Yeah. I dig yeah. that. I dig that. Yeah. I just thought those were like, just, and I was like, wow, like 89% of facts are made up on the spot. No, no, no yeah, not yeah, at all. Yeah. Yeah. Was on there. All right, no, that's I, great I, though. I did take the time to type this all out. I really don't like Elon Musk though. I, I love like Elon him. Musk. I, like him. I really, love you guys. Him. I, I mean, like Starlink him. and all that stuff. I if think I wasn't cool. so heterosexual, man, I'd be all over Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon. <laughs> yeah, I like him. I mean, Starlink I like what is he's cool doing. as shit. By the way, I mean, it is absolutely cool as shit. To think that we'll be able to, you know, internet everywhere. I mean, you think about. I think about that all the time. It's 2023. Like when we go up to her family's cabin, I don't have internet. Like, how is that possible? How How is there anywhere you have in a computer the world on your... where you don't have? <laughs> That data, a mega computer on your wrist, but yeah, no, you can get, you can bring it up there. You can do like wireless from somewhere or whatever. You but can run no, it off here. What I'm saying is like cellular, which we rely on for most of the time. You know, you know how mean? they like, show those maps. You're saying there's actual places here in Pennsylvania that it's blacked out. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, there are places where the the, the signal does not reach. That, Absolutely, and that's Forks. That's Forksville. That area now. AT and T has towers there, but for instance, T Mobile doesn't. That's who I have. Okay, so T Mobile is partnering with Starlink. Uh, supposedly, and they're going to have um, that you'll be able to use the Starlink satellites to get internet. Yep. Basically, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, think about if you're out hiking and you have an emergency or something like that, and you can't send, you know, for help. Or I know Apple came out with a satellite um, SOS or whatever, I guess, on, on one of their updates. But I mean, you could be out somewhere with no service, and it's we, it's 2023. Like We should be all connected all the time. We Fun are. Fact, through our COVID shot, we're all connected. Yeah, we are. Fun fact, in a recent hike and or camping trip with uh, buddies of mine, uh, we Hock were... Hock weekend. Hock and Dock weekend. Hock and weekend, yeah. Hock and Dock and Spoh weekend. While we were out, uh, it was your edit, we were out in a place where there is zero. Nothing. Light, light pollution, no nothing. So the, it was beautiful skies, everything just crystal clear, crisp and clean with no caffeine. Mm -hmm. Uh Two nights in a row, you could just look up and you could see that Starlink floating oh, the, by. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's something to see, man. When you just see this row of twenty summer, what is it, twenty or thirty, just these little white dots just in a row. It's it's like Santa on his sleigh. Yeah. Shit, we saw that at our uh, friend's house during the uh, karaoke night. Remember? That's right, yeah, yeah. The Starlink. Yeah. You guys remember that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Where everybody that's right. was freaking out, like, "What the hell is that?" And I was, people were like, "Damn, it's aliens." Everybody, yeah. But that would have been a cool way to go. Yeah, if they had to come, you know, come on down. I concur. Yep, yep. So, Dave, what's new with you? So, I picked something, too, like Matt did, that I watched. I thought this was interesting on Netflix. Now, we have referenced in other shows that we went to Catholic school. We've all come up Catholic and all that. So, to me, this was interesting. I mean, I think it's worth a watch, whether you're an atheist, a Catholic, Muslim, whatever you are. I think it's just interesting. Mysteries of the Faith, it's called. Let Us Receive. Yeah, it came out November 1st on Netflix. They cover a couple different relics from the Catholic Church. And uh, the two that I want to focus on today, the first one was the crown of thorns, which I thought was interesting. Now, these are all, I mean, they can't be proven 100%. The Vatican likes to recognize these two in particular as being authentic, but they're still doubters. And, I mean, there's doubters on everything. So I'm sure, you know, there's going to be people who say, well, that, you can't prove that's, that's, that's real, but... There's people that say these have healing powers and, you know, that when you're in the presence of them, you, there's a feeling that comes over you of like you're seeing something that's connected to God or was connected 
in in some way that you feel like there's like a power there. But is, isn't that like in the Catholic church from growing up visiting different churches? I remember my mom liked to go visit different churches, but most of the churches you see out there usually have some sort of relics and, and they'll have like a ankle bone fragment of, you know, St. Elizabeth Ann right. Seton well, yeah, there's or stuff. they have, you know, um, St. Francis of Assisi's uh, thigh bone and, yeah. and, 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 and on like certain occasions or feast day, they'll like walk it around the church and, yeah. Throw some holy water at you. So if yeah. I'm not mistaken, a location that has something like that is called a basilica. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the crown of thorns, for instance, formed by Roman soldiers and forced onto the head of Jesus over 2,000 years ago and to mock him. So they were basically, you know, when he was getting crucified. It was kept at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris um, up until 2019. That's when it, the Bernie burned. When the, the fire, place burned the down. The fire happened, yeah. Mm. They, they kept it in a secret vault and it was encased in glass and gold. When it's in public, so they would put it out in public so people would come from all over to see this thing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's guarded by 12 knights and a security team, so there's these 12. They have, like, armor and stuff? <laughs> no, no not this kind of Shields. knights. But, but they there, have jousting tournaments? There's they, a, there's a since, lot of security around it. You yeah, know they've I mean? since up the uh, ante on the armor. Okay. Yeah. It's Kevlar now. Nice. So they have some history with this actual piece. So when you see this crown of thorns, it's encased in glass and covered like in gold, but you can see the actual crown like inside the glass. They have records on this thing all the way back to 870 AD that are like kind of actual record records where they're able to tra- trace it from there. There was a reference of it in Jerusalem in 870 AD. And then the next time it was referenced wasn't until the 10th century in Constantinople, mm. which is in- modern day. Istanbul. Yeah, Istanbul, yep. yep. And uh, from there, you know, they traced it. it. It moved around from person to person. But they had, uh, at one time in Constantinople, I guess, they weren't doing too well. They were selling off everything, trying to, like, just, their, you know, money was... Fire sale, man. Fire sale, we basically. Gotta, gotta pay the rent. So they had sold this crown of thorns. Somebody, like, kind of behind the scenes sold it. And uh, they found out about it. We're like, you, you know, you can't sell that. <laughs> what, what are you doing, basically? <laughs> you can like, sell anything. Right. So they got a hold of uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. He would buy it, yeah. I'm sure. They got a hold of the king of France at the time. Mm. And we're like, hey, uh, can you buy this thing back? Basically, it's a re- you know very important religious relic. We can't have it just like disappear. S- some guy owning it, you know what I mean? Sure. Elon Musk owning it. So they actually bought it back. The king of France was able to track it down. He sent people out to track it down. They tracked it down, bought it back for like, the, the number was insane. They, they said it almost broke the country of France, basically, how much okay. money they had to pay to buy this thing back. Hmm. But then, it, you know, they, they had control of it then and have been keeping it there in France ever since. It was like in another church there for a while until Notre Dame was, but it was 100 years, they said, to build Notre Dame Cathedral. It took 100 years to build that thing. Hmm. And uh, it's been there, you know, in modern history, that's where it's been kept under lock and key. They had that fire. So on this documentary, they kind of focus on the firefighters going in there to find Mm -hmm. this thing. But the location of it in Notre Dame Cathedral was real secret. Only like a few people knew where to actually kept it. Sure. So these firefighters were went in and they were like, look, of anything you need to save here, it's the crown of thorns. It's the most important relic. Yeah. That's that, the expensive one. That's the one we need to find. That's the one that could bankrupt the country. But I'm, I'm pretty sure, though, if you went running through the cathedral, you can just grab, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff in there. There is. But you, you could be, like, grabbing some different things on your way to trying to find the thorns, you know? So they sent this these firefighters in, and they were looking around, and then they, they found it. They're like, oh, here it is. We got it. You know what I mean? They found, like, a safe. They brought it out. They're like, no, that's the fake one. <laughs> <laughs> so they have one that's kind of like a decoy. That's awesome. So they finally got a hold of the guy that was like, had the map and was like, this is where it's at. And they were able to, to obviously go in and get the original one, the OG one and save it. But that cathedral was, I mean, you, I mean, I'm sure you saw the footage. Oh yeah. Of the fire and the damage. Yeah, that's, That was one of like people just standing there watching it crying. It was just, an old roof. It was dry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was for sure dry. So, I mean, I thought that was real interesting. The other thing they covered is the Holy Grail, which a lot of, you know, from Indiana Jones. It was the cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. Mm. Um, mm. There was actually a lot of interesting stuff on, uh, which they didn't cover in this, but the, the Nazis, that was for real during World War II. Yes, they wanted everything. Oh, yeah. the, the Nazis took everything sure. of any kind of money. 
Well, that, but they they were more interested in the the powers of it, like yeah. This, like the supernatural kind of powers that this thing possessed. Like if you if you have this, you can eternal life and this and that. So, um, you know, Hitler had sent these guys. Hey, go get all these artifacts, and that was all legit. I know if you look at the Ten Commandments, you'll melt. <laughs> yeah, from yeah, the that's movie. true. That, right. that is factual. That is factual. So the uh, the Holy Grail, the one that the Vatican recognizes as the actual Holy Grail is in the Cathedral of Valencia. It's in Spain. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a scientist there that actually, I guess, did a test on what materials were used. And there's one of the materials that's in the um, the grail that's there that dates back to that time and is of a material that would have been from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So there's those type things that they try to use as like, oh, this is legit. This sure. could actually be the thing. But there's other ones that go, no, the actual real Holy Grail is in another part of Spain. So there was actually two or three Holy Grails that they say are possibilities, but don't, this is the only one that the Vatican recognizes as the actual. Well, look, if there were 13 people at the Last Supper, maybe mm -hmm. they all had solo cups. So there might have <laughs> yeah. been like 13 cups passed around. Maybe they passed them around. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Did they ever find the Holy Keg? Right. Was it? <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. yeah. But I just thought that was interesting. Now there's there's other ones on the the Shroud of Turin, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, which I didn't get to that one yet. Jesus I mean, I've heard face. that story. Yeah, that that the image got like burned into in the face, stuff. Yeah. punched so, to the face, pile drive to the face. Have either of you ever had a, you know, being in Catholic school, going to church and stuff like that? Has there ever been anything that uh, a feeling or anything that came over you, like when you were in the presence of something or everything that that made you like? And I'm assuming you guys believe in, in one way. Of course, or another, of course, yes. Um, that made you feel like, oh, I feel something here. Like, this seems real to me. You know what I mean? Like, I, So I, I believe that that has more to do with the more you believe in something, the more you'll make it happen. Right. Like, that if you are so devout and so, I, I mean, just so into something, you will will it to happen. Like, you could will, you can worry yourself into having cancer. Right. So it, it, the, the brain is a really weird thing, man. It's powerful like that, yeah. Um, I remember, I don't know who it was, a uh, killer. Or I, I was doing a, doing a mass, and the bishop was in the mass because there was only like, I don't know, 10 kids in my class going up through, through my grade school, Catholic grade school. And uh, I remember like the staff and what else was there? His hat. Yes, the hat. But I remember I was the staff kid. So you had to wear these white garments mm. in order to hold the staff or the right. bishop. But um, I remember like, you know, just like moving my, <laughs> like moving my hand a little bit. So I like had my thumb on it. I was like, ah, I'm, like trying to like touch something. Yeah. Touch, yeah. yeah. Just I'm to see touching if, the gold, man. I'm touching right. yeah, the gold. Like to see if it was like something more powerful or something. Cause, but I think when you're younger, like it's a wizard staff. Yeah. Like I thought shit. I was going to start doing some magic or something, man. Jesus you're going to feel like electricity off. It. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, but when you're younger and I think you both can relate is, um, it, it is, it's something that like talking about wrinkles, like the whole God thing. Like I, I want to be like close. You just yeah, you feel know. like the guy c controls everything for right, sure. For right, sure. Right. And, um, I mean, as you get older, you, you, I, I think you develop your own forms of faith, even though like you're strong within what you grew up with. Mm. But yeah, that was, that was something to me that I think like, and, and the relics too, cause just the, the basilicas, correct? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. When you go to see these relics, I think it's like something, something, yeah, it's something, it's something big. And I, I can't I get it. say it's a, so for me, I can't say that it's anything specific to an item, but I can say that so I would go on weekend camping trips just as much as I would go on random weekend I don't want to say encounters. I think they called it, it wasn't search. It was, it was, it was something where it was almost like peer counseling, but mm -hmm. for the church. Right. So if you were like a, a retreat. Little, yeah. That, thank you, Matt. That's, that's the word. Like, okay. Like, well, it's, it was like a retreat, but it wasn't necessarily cause I've been on retreats too. It's, this is something where you go to, you go to like, like a KFC type thing or not KFC. Yes, the KFC. Not the K of C? Yes, the, the KFC. KFC. Okay, the KFC. Yes, the KFC. Knights of Columbus. Yes. Kind of like that. So if you're a kid, you're going to this thing, and there are older kids, like, whatever, and and there's, they're telling you, like, experiences they've had, and some there's some adults there, too, that are telling you about experiences they had, and it's all with the, the whole idea of, you know, getting you stronger and closer to the church and shit like that, and you will walk out of there. You absolutely will walk out of there. Like so believing, like you're ready to be like a priest or a nun, like, like a that. 
or yeah. just like heal that people. Day. Yeah. Like you are just so full of the Holy Spirit that you are just ready to hit the ground running. Like you love the faith. You love everything. It's, it is like some might call it brainwashing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it, 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 I think of it as more of an invigoration mm-hmm. to again, remind you of the faith and to get you truly, truly, you know, grounded in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'm, that is a feeling or a sensation that I think would be akin to someone getting so close to a relic and so someone believing like, Oh my God, I'm so close to the Holy grail right. when reality on that Holy grail, by the way, it's actually at the bottom of uh, Oak Island. It's in the, are you familiar with Oak Island? No. So there's a show. Was that in Jersey? The Co- the Curse of Oak Island. It's on the History uh, Channel. Okay, okay. Yeah, I remember di- you talking about yeah, that. Dude, yeah, dude, they've been digging on this island for like 10 years looking for whatever the hell's down there. I bet the Holy Grail's down there. <laughs> That's where it's at. I swear to God. I know yeah. it's not made of gold. No. It's no. factual. But I just thought that was an interesting um, he documentary. Chose and 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 you didn't like the documentary? No, I no said, he chose oh, it from Indiana Jones. <laughs> oh, from poorly. Indiana Jones. Oh, I gotcha. Because you remember, like, yeah. And, it's, and he's like, he was a carpenter. That is not a carpenter's cup. No. And it's and it's something that came along. There, There's some stuff I went through this week or the past couple of weeks. I mean, there's stuff I, through the past few months that I've gone through in my personal life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, sometimes you think things like this pop up in your, just to, like, you know, remind you, like, don't, well, even, forget, don't forget you have yeah. your faith. You have, you know what I mean? This yeah. and that. Like, it was just kind of like one of these things where it kind of reminded me, like, watching that. Oh, this popped up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like, you know, like, sometimes you, as you get older, you, you forget. But, um, you know what I mean? Like It, it was kind of cool. Uh, I was just in New York a while back, and I took my kids to St. Patrick's Cathedral. And it's like one of those things. But they walked in there, and they thought, you know, them being Catholic school kids, and looking around and seeing like this huge church. It and, is tremendously huge. Yes, mm-hmm. but just like the architecture on the outside, the architecture inside, they they really and, and to like, you know, give a couple dollars to see them light a candle was something that was spiritual. Right. Sure. And yeah. It, yeah. And and it was it was cool. Whether you chalk it up to you believe, you don't believe, I think anybody you have all had experiences and whether you wanna what you wanna tie it to or say this is because uh if it's karma, just you know, just the way the world works, or if it's like a higher power or religion. I mean, I think we can all kind of relate no matter what you believe in. Sure. You know, everybody. But, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I, I like that. Um, Real quick, though, do you think— It's like, never really quick. <laughs> yeah, you're does, right. Damn. It doesn't have to be on this one, though. Yeah, you're right. Because free, it's freestyle. It's freestyle yeah. Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> That's so cool. Mm-hmm. But um, on, on a side note to the Mysteries of Faith thing, like, you don't think the Pope has, like, his own little room where he, like, keeps, like, the real shit? Maybe. <laughs> He's like— He's like, Sister Geraldine, bring me the crown. And they like, you know what I mean? Or like, the, he got a whole room. He's like rolling around, having fun, like he, Scrooge McDuck. Drinking not... drinking malt liquor out of the Holy Grail. Yeah, like just partying. You know what I mean? He might. Yeah, maybe. Like putting on the crown, like, <laughs> what about horses? <laughs> yeah. Crying over you. Is that uh, goodbye horses? <laughs> goodbye that... horses, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I could see like, I don't know, the Pope would be. Kind of like how the president of the United States, they get to find out all this. Oh, oh wow. Check out the alien. That's Hanging right. out of Camp David. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I, I think the Pope has like a secret room where he has all the cool shit. Oh, yeah, fun maybe. fact. Speaking of Camp David, if you ever drive down 15 from here to D.C., you will pass Camp David. What do you mean? You know where it's at? Everybody knows where. Everybody, to be clear, everyone can find out where Camp David is. So from I thought here, it was like top secret. No, man. Not with satellites. Yeah, look, look on the internet. <laughs> Nothing's a secret anymore. What? Yeah. So if you take, for if you go to, if you go to uh, Washington, D.C. from Harrisburg, just take 15 south. Right. Before you get to 270, which will then join to 70, yes, and take yeah. you to 495 or whatever, take you to the city. As you're on 15, uh, you have certainly crossed into Maryland. Uh, it's not far past the, uh, what is it? The uh, There's a zoo-ish place down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also a Roy Rogers exit. I forget which one that is. I can't remember. See, that's crazy. I always thought that was like super top. No, secret. dude, it's, no. I swear to God in Sunny Jesus, it's right down 15. Swear I mean, to God. You're, you're not pulling up to where the they president's have, like, retreat is. Yeah, you're, you're not rolling in there's there. There's no billboards well, and stuff. That's bringing right. a picnic basket right. and shit. No. <laughs> you're five miles from Camp D. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, but it, seriously, just go down 15. And if you were, if, essentially, as you're traveling, if you were to turn right, mm-hmm. And drive in X number of miles, you'll be at Camp David. There's probably dudes there. Like, probably. Yeah. With guns oh, I would imagine. Stuff. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of guns and, yeah. <laughs> Lawyers, guns, and money. That's it. Send so, uh, well, I guess we maybe move on to the next thing. You got anything else, man? Um, 
No, just uh, something I was I was going to talk about the Squid Games. I don't know if anybody it used to be a big thing. I watched this series, but that's not what you're talking about, right? Well, yeah, there was the actual series where like the people were really dying, like the the show. Or you? No, I watched the show on Netflix that was like subtitled. That it was like, yes, the the one where that's not real. Yes, that is not real. This okay. was they they actually played off of this and made a real series. Oh, out there's of, a real series. Yes, it has like the exact same games, but um. But real people, real people, and and they would do the same thing as in the 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 movie or the show. So these people, like in the beginning with that doll, like da, 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 would sing or whatever, and they'd right. stop. And if the people would move, they have these caps that would blow them. Boom! But not real bullets. Not real bullets. Yeah. But it was actually the all these people were, you know, trying to win this uh this prize. So the prize ended up, ended up being four point five six million dollars. Damn. Hmm. And they were done filming this like ten months ago. So this lady that won, Mia Wellman, or whatever her name is, Wilhelm, she she's still yet to receive any of this money. Oh, for real? For, like, surviving all these things. And I think there was, like, 300-some people. Damn. So wait a second, wait a second. So I am only familiar with the name Squid Game. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen an episode, not one. I don't know what it's about at all. What the hell is Squid Game about? It was like a, uh, on Netflix, it was a show that, it was, like, over in, Korea, right? Or Japan. Korea or Japan. And they, it was Asian. Asian. And they go on this game show where um you think you're on a game show to win this money that, you know, basically if you lose like you're just out, but actually when you lose you're dead. Yeah, the idea was so, going around they left these cards and these people had an opportunity so, to call this number cuz they were yeah. usually poor people, people that didn't have much. Oh. Like, like bum fights. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. They, they'd have games like red light green light. Okay. So the thing would go red light and then green light, and they'd run, and when they'd say red light, if you kept moving, this thing would shoot you. But Dang. it was, like, really shooting you. Yeah, these people would, yeah, they would kill you. So you would be eliminated from this game by death. By death, yeah. So they thought it would be a good idea to try it with regular people trying to win this money as how it would be the real squid game. You're just not really dying. But people would be eliminated. So which came first, people really dying or people fake dying? People fake dying. People okay. fake dying. Okay. They, they based it on that fake show, I guess. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But it, they try, try to turn it into a game show, like the one that with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Total and, Recall. Yes, yeah, like a Total Recall. No, 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 Running Man. A Running Man. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Running Man, yeah. And that was with that your, was, uh, Richard Dawson was on. Correct. Yeah. yeah. God rest his one. soul. Which if anybody wants to look back at any real episodes of Family Feud, check out Richard Dawson. With that like making out, making out with 17-year-olds. He was so pervy. <laughs> with that he, long mic. Yeah, like uh, oh, like Bob Barker, like yeah, oh Richard Dawson. Thing. Your mic is so long. Yeah, he would uh, he would really get it on with him. Yeah, he'd be like, and stuff. he'd be like, name me one. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, he was uh, <laughs> yeah. how do we call it inappropriate? Yes, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> what is your favorite mm, color? <laughs> Oh, you smell you like smell this. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Some dudes looking at it like, Dawson, come on, that's my wife. I know, man. Or that's my daughter. Yeah. Mm. Like Pig in the Poke from yeah. uh, Chevy Chase. Those or guys had all the power back in the day, mm. game mm. show host. In America. <laughs> First, you get the game show, then you get, you get the, the power, power yeah. then you get the women. That's and it. I have all three. Yeah. But and anyway. You know it. <laughs> yeah, Squid Game it was based off of this show that was not a real show. They turned it into a real show. Mm -hmm. But these people were like, really trying to it the the pot came up to 4.56 million but i think they're saying that they didn't have enough there's no money generated so this whole thing they went through this whole For nothing like 10 months of whatever of filming or eight eight months of filming right. and living off of like they gave people rations it was exactly the way they're living on these bunks are like five five ten twenty feet up in the air these bunks that they had to live in doing this whole show like it was the real show and and they got nothing for no it. money out of yeah. it yeah Jeez. Man, suckers. Suckers. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I just thought that was like a fun thing. And that's another thing to check out, too. I mean, we keep talking about stuff you can watch. Yeah, Squid Game. I so, Squid Game. Squid Game. It, it's really cool. It actually yeah. is really it's cool. Worth, worth I am so. Fun. There is so much content out there to watch. There is so much. Like, it's overwhelming. Well, especially I, with what we do. I mean, we're always trying to watch it. I know, dude, how do these people have time to watch all this? Like, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day. He's like, oh, I need something to watch, man. We And he will rattle off all of the stuff that he and or he and his wife have watched over the course of like a week or a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, God damn, how do you have that much time? Um, unemployment, yeah. disability. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. There's, there's, there's a lot of that out there. Oh, we were talking about the homeless earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, is it just me or is that a relatively recent term like almost a pc term and i say that because when i was a kid we just used to call them bums 
Oh, you talking about homeless? Yeah, the homeless. The people homeless. who are homeless. Like, I guess it's a PC or a, a kinder, gentler way. Of saying bum? Of saying bum. I guess. I didn't know bum was bad. Well, yeah, does a bum necessarily mean you're homeless? Right. Well, I, I don't know. I just know as a kid, I never used the term homeless. Like, I remember I, I remember when the term homeless became in vogue, if that's the, mm. the appropriate thing. Like, it was our teenage years or our early 20s. Like, the term homeless, at least it's common usage. I don't think has been around that long. Maybe I'm fucked. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, Man. I'm not sure. I don't really think of any of them as. Yeah, what else? Like a bum. Um, what was the a secluse a recluse recluse? recluse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not uh, to be confused with the brown recluse. Yes, brown. They're, yeah. they're bad. They're dangerous. They, they but what else? What else do they call bums? Or homeless people? Hobos. Hobos. Yeah, hobos that was a good. Yeah. One. But you always know. pictured them. They have like a big clown foot with like their or big clown. Bag. Shoe with like their feet hanging out. Yeah, the, a stick yeah, with a yeah, the stick with <laughs> the shoes. The shoes talking to you, and, yeah. and they got around to see cool places on a train. That, right. That's how. That's how I think of like a really cool hobo. Back in the day. Back in the day. Look, back in the day, I'm telling you, they didn't call him the homeless or that guy is homeless. They would, that guy's a bum or that guy's a hobo. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I think you're right. I now you're saying that I you, you can't. I don't really hear that too much. I yeah. mean, I have been hearing that. I don't really hear bum as much. They don't like on the news like. There's bums in Harrisburg. That's you know right. I mean, the, like the homeless problem in Harrisburg. That would be cool. I think that's on Fox News. What they say, bums. Yeah, they're like the bums. <laughs> you got to get rid of these bums in Harrisburg. Maybe Rocky think... also calls them bums. Oh, speaking of Rocky, Rocky th- who? Rocky Balboa. Oh, Rocky Balboa. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go line. ahead. Yeah. So now in Philly, there's a something with the statue on top of the 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 library. Yeah, they yeah, move they, that. They moved it someplace. Now you get your picture taken or you do something somewhere. You can do something yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I have my picture taken with the family. It's down on the corner of the museum. It's not on, up on top. All right. All right. But it's been there for a while. Mm-hmm. They moved it for a while. He also has one in his house. You see that little kid go up, hey, Rocky. And he's like reciting that, the whole speech. That, yeah. That, yeah, that yeah. was pretty cool. I'm still can't... upset that Philly got rid of the Frank Rizzo statue. That's a damn shame. That's that, easy. Oh, all right. Frank Rizzo, best mayor Philadelphia has yeah, ever this, seen. This is Frank Rizzo. That city could use a mayor like Frank Rizzo again. Yeah. Uh, his, his statue out was outside of uh, city hall forever, like mm. forever. Uh, they took it down, I guess a few years ago. Oh shit. Yeah, is, they, it, is that when you know, when you made it, when yeah. you get your own statue, in America, statue. It's his statue somewhere. Yes. Yeah. You? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. You've made it. Yes. So Zab, what do you got? I got nothing. I got some fun facts on the day, like this day in history. Yeah, let's hear. Oh, that's yeah. I heard that today. I actually thought that would that would be cool. So today, now, fun fact: today is December thirteenth, two thousand and three. By the time two thousand and three. By I'm sorry, <laughs> two thousand twenty three. I was like, We're well, way ahead of the time. Go back in time. <laughs> so, sorry, my DeLorean was set. <laughs> yeah, was off yeah. there. Yeah, it's okay. So it on that. <laughs> Today is 12, 13, 23. So by the time you hear this, I'm sure it's we're long after that. However, on this day in 1577, Sir Francis Drake set sail for what would become a three-year journey, resulting in him becoming the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. Three-year tour. That's right. Surely, surely you both remember the term or the name Sir Francis Drake when we were coming mm-hmm. to grade school somewhere. Yeah, he's from Maybe. Canada, I think. Uh, close. England. Oh, okay. Uh, in 1636, the National Guard was founded. How was oh. that possible? Well, it came as a result of the Massachusetts Bay Colony organizing three militias to defend against the Pequot Indians. Mm. Yeah. I think that's why they had the Army-Navy game in Massachusetts. That makes sense. sense. Yes. Yeah, could have yes. been, yeah. It was on this day in 1989. A driving Miss Daisy was released. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't anytime I think of driving Miss Daisy, I think of that one skit that was on In Living Color, where the the guy who's playing Poe, the the driver, the Morgan Freeman part. Morgan Freeman. He he ends up climbing into the back with Miss Daisy <laughs> and they start getting it on. And the, the skit ends with Poe, you're my best friend. After he's, you know, <laughs> wow, thank you, Miss Daisy. Washing his winky in Miss Daisy's sinky. Oh. Kitchen sinky. Yeah, all right. <laughs> PG, PG. In, uh, yeah. Oh, it was on this day, December 13th, year 2000, where... Of our Lord. Al Gore conceded the presidential, oh, the presidential. election mm-hmm. to George W. Bush. Oh, how about that? That, that was a close, that was a close election. It was a close one. That was a right. close one. That was a yeah. close one. Interestingly enough, it was exactly three years later in 2003 
that as a result of Operation Red Dawn, Saddam Hussein was captured by American forces after being found hiding in a hole in the ground near a farmhouse outside of Tikrit. How Did about that? Patrick Swayze do that? No, yeah. but it was, in fact, named after the movie. Is that what it's uh, called? Red Dawn. Red Dawn. You remember those pictures when they came out? Oh, my when God. When they had Saddam, like, he was everywhere. He was oh, like, yeah. A, yeah. His beard was mm-hmm. awful. Like, he just was ravaged by broke assness and, oh, homelessness. Homelessness, yes. That I, think, I, think they wo- I think they whooped his ass a little bit, too, though. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't to. on camera. Yeah, they took the pictures after they whooped his ass. Yeah, that was an ass whooping. We got we to gotta, we gotta church this up here, man. You look a little too clean. Mm-hmm. Got to get some blood on you. That's it. So, oh, maybe a couple, handful of famous birthdays. Ah. Mm. December 13th. December 13th, 1925. 25. Dick Van Dyke. Oh, wow. He's still living, right? Still alive. Oh, 98 years old, still alive and kicking. And I mean kicking it hard. Like this dude, there's videos that come out, whatever, YouTube, you name it. He goes to the gym every day. He runs, he exercises, he walks around, hands out money, gives money away to people. Just like, hey, man, I see you. You're, you know, you bum. Here's, you know, here's a couple of bucks. Good luck. Well, he, he's but, a chimney sweep. He needs to be in shape. Dude, yeah. that guy is still in tip top shape. However, alas, who is no longer with us, born on 19, this day in 1929, the great Christopher Plummer. Oh, okay. As made famous by The Sound of Music. Yeah. Captain Von Trapp. Also featured in 12 Monkeys. Uh-huh. With Brad Pitt? Yep. Oh, okay. He was, Chris uh, he, was Plummer. He, he played uh, Brad Pitt's father. Okay. Mm. I just remember him from Sound of Music. Sound of Music. Uh, still alive and with us, born in 1948, Ted Nugent. Oh. Not cat scratch fever. Yeah. He's got some kind of fever. Mm. Yeah, Not, he, he's, he's been doing, he, he makes like those hunting shows and stuff. Yeah. He hangs out with his wife and shoots things. That yeah. man loves America. He that does. Man loves, that he, man loves freedom. Yeah. He loves freedom and God bless him. I agree with him on many things. In 1957, born this day, Steve Buscemi. He's a good guy. Yeah. Fantastic. Boardwalk Empire. Boardwalk Empire was, I mean, a masterpiece series. I like that. Absolutely a masterpiece series. Although I thought he did a great job as Crazy Eyes in um, Mr. Deeds. Yeah, he was good in that. I liked him in Fargo. Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. Bam. He was good, yeah. Why do I got to be Mr. Pink? (laughs) Yeah, because everybody wants to be Mr. Black or Mr. White. So He's I like, y'all who I tell you, if you're Mr. Pink, you're Mr. Pink. Yeah. He kept going though. Why do I got to be Mr. Pink? Why Mr. Why am I got to be Mr. Pink? So how, so uh-huh. Buscemi is how old then? Well, if he was born in 57 and we're now in 2023. Quick math. 66. So he would be 43 plus 23. That's 66. Nice. I thought he'd be younger than that. I guess not. They're all, everybody's getting old. Yeah. He would, I would. I would have guessed in his fifties, but yeah, that's yeah, what I thought. Bad, fifty something, bad fifty-eight with ages and stuff. Mm. Fun fact too: Pink, Mister Pink. Yep. That's how the singer got her name, Pink. Is that right? Yeah, because she. Like, I remember her saying, like, her and her friends would watch that movie all the time, and her friends would call her Mister Pink. She's and, a, and she just shortened it to Pink or whatever for the. She went to the same high school that my wife went to. Oh wow! Yeah, same that's movie. out in Buxco, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. Monco? Either Buxco or Monco. Yeah, uh, Buxco. She, she's older though, right? Yeah, she's closer to yeah. her. Yeah. Hmm. Oh wait, I got one more. Oh, now to just to age all of us. Born on this day in 1989. Taylor Swift. Correct. <laughs> no way. Boo. Taylor Swift is the answer. She is far more successful than all three of us. Yeah. Probably more successful she, than anyone listening to this podcast. I'm sorry to inform you, she has more money than all of us combined. She has reached the over. billions. Yeah, She's in sure. the billions. When now. you said 1989, I, I figure my daughter, all these teenagers, they're all obsessed with her. Yeah. And she has Not even album. teenagers, young kids now. Kids Everybody. Like seven, eight, nine years old. And my wife loves it. Mm, they love her. her. All, so when you said 1989, she has an, an album called, called 1989. So, yeah. so I figured. I'm not familiar with her guess. body of work. I'm sure I've heard a song or two. I know like a song just because of my daughter playing them, but you know, I don't really listen to it or anything. She has like that, that karma one out now. It's like huge. Is she the one that came up with that uh, Call Me Maybe? No. No, that's, uh, that's not her. That's no. Camilla Cabello. She has like... Um, karma Chameleon. Yes. Yeah. Look what look what you made me do. I don't know. And uh, what was like her big hit though? Taylor Swift. Um, Wildest Dreams. That wildest dreams. That's mm-hmm. Belinda Carlisle. I thought it was. No, oh, I don't know. But anyway, it's I not, thought that was out of our wheelhouse. But yeah, Taylor Swift is uh, pretty much she's on everything now. No, no, who's wild? 
what's the name of that old band? Yeah. Once upon a time Duh. in my wildest. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that one. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, that's it's, not Billy the Carl. Oh God, I know the name of that band. Like I, I should be kicking. Oh myself my gosh, in the yes. And speaking Once of that, when upon you, when, a time. the uh, Moody Blues. Thank Moody you, Blues. Moody Blues. When you sent the Once Tesla, the Tesla mine. thing, it got me thinking about the band Tesla. Yeah, so we're gonna cover that. Yeah, yeah. Then I said yes, and I sent you the band. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, but I was recently in Boston. Oh, from yeah. Boston. But then, um, I don't took a trip around the world a little bit, but no, went through the U.S., went through Kansas. <laughs> nice. And then you had a Genesis. And yeah, I had a Genesis. Mm. Talking about different things. Mm. So I got some PA fun facts. Oh. So this is from a web, website, Uncovering PA, P, sorry, UncoveringPA.com. So these are, the, the name of the article was 53 PA fun facts you probably didn't know. And we have all 53 for I don't you. have 53, but I picked out. <laughs> Thank you. I picked out like maybe, Bless you. maybe 10 here that I thought. That's fun though. That's fun. I like that. So the smiley face emoticon was invented by Scott Fowman September 19th, 1982 at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, PA. Hmm. So smart kids and face, smart yeah. smart kids that go to that school. Now, I'm just thinking the emoticon like 82. Like what what would you I'm thinking what we now know is the emoji or emoticon back then. It, is that the smiley face? I think that would be the two what the semicolon with the maybe that's what it that's is. what it was. Oh, I was thinking just the smiley face that goes on like a shit happens t shirt or something like that. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Oh, I'll, you mean the one from uh, Forrest Gump? Yeah. Unless it truly is the one. Unless I I don't know what the hell an emoticon in. Maybe an emoticon is in fact as Matt had mentioned, like in text, using yeah. characters on a keyboard to make. That's that's how I I things. perceive it. I don't know if I'm correct or not. I I'm would no wager, scientist. I would believe you, Matt. Thank you. I don't believe. <laughs> So that's in Pittsburgh, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of Pittsburgh ones in here. A lot Ooh. of cool shit going down in Pittsburgh. Good job, Pittsburgh. The polio vaccine Ooh. also created in Pittsburgh in 1955. Originally called Bino, Bingo was invented in the early 1920s by Hugh J. Ward. I think Bino now is for like gas pain. It yes, is, yeah, yeah, that is correct. Is. That, is, that wasn't created in Pittsburgh, though. And Bino where else? Part. Pittsburgh. You know why they called it Bino? Because it alleviates gas pain. <laughs> that that could be. Because there was no, it was B-E-A-N-O. No, because no. they use beans as the placeholder. As markers, correct. Beano. Correct. Very good, very correct. good. Now, I did know this one, but I still think it's interesting. And maybe people didn't know this, but during World War II, the Eagles and Steelers combined to form the Steagles. I knew that. And I did not. I saw that on that ESPN special. And that was in 1943. They actually had a winning record. Mm. So they were, that was, you know, because. They didn't have anybody to play because yeah, they were all play. at war. Yeah, we could have. Probably played NFL back then. Yeah. You know, during World War II. Yeah. I bet you I can throw that ball over that mountain. Yeah, that's right. Uncle Rico. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't the guys that were drafted or in war, so apparently these guys were like either injured or. Yeah, flat footed and whatever. And, else. and <laughs> for the Vietnam War, they called them conscientious objectors. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Religion. Also, back in the. So in the 40s, they called them draft dodgers. Draft dodgers. Yeah. Not the Brooklyn Dodgers. No. Or the LA Dodgers. Yes. None mm -hmm. of those teams. The Big Mac, invented by Jim Delegati. He owned McDonald's franchises near Pittsburgh. Yep. It was first served up in 1967 in Uniontown, which is south of Pittsburgh and near Ohio Pile State Park, mm. which I heard is like a really cool state park with yep. uh, white water rafting. Do you, do you guys remember you got the McDonald's record in the mail that gave you the McDonald's menu? A record? It was a record. You played it. It was on, It was an actual, it was a flimsy. Yeah. It was and a square. A square. Exactly. It was a square. It was transparent. It, or I should say translucent. Translucent. Yep. You'd play it on a record player. Yeah, and it had it went big Mac McDLT, a quarter pounder with some cheese filet, fish, fish a hamburger, hamburger cheeseburger, cheeseburger, happy, happy meal, meal, McNuggets, tasty golden fresh fries, regular or larger size of salad, chef or garden, or chicken salad, oriental, big big breakfast, same muffin, hot cakes, sauce, and maybe biscuits, and four desserts, varieties of hot apple pie, chocolate chip cookie, whatever bullshit. Wow. But this whole thing, you, you never had that? I, I kind of vaguely remember when you're saying that. Was it kind of like a, like a, Everybody got one. Like yeah, they got you in, in the mail. It was in, in the mail. Everybody in the known universe received one. P.S. I miss desperately the chicken salad Oriental. That, that salad was, yes. was banging I don't good. Remember that that one. had those little the crispy. Yep. Like wonton. Uh, yeah, the, the wontons. The, the, the weird like the the weird little Chinese crunchy noodles. Like things. fried noodles. Yeah. 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 God damn, that salad was so good. But that's it, it had some cool stuff that would come in the mail. But yeah, yeah, it was an actual, like, it was a square record. 
I don't remember that. Put the needle on the record. On, look on eBay, see if we can find one. Yeah, it'd probably be millions of dollars. So check this out, Matt. <laughs> Matt, you, yeah, it might be millions of dollars. You're Maybe right. not. Yeah, Maybe no. not. Matt, you'll like this one. Okay. This is up your alley because you have a you have a personal connection to this. I thought you were going to say I had a bowling alley in my house. No. But no, okay. Now, Zab, I don't know if you're fans of these or not, but the Bantam Car Company, whose headquarters were in Butler, PA, invented the Jeep. Oh. The U.S. military gave the plans to Ford and Willys Overland, believing they could produce the amount of vehicles they needed. So it was for, you know, World War II, I guess they were ramping up. They wanted this, you know, utility vehicle to basically use. Do you know why it's called Jeep? Yeah, because of the uh, the the um, model number or model that they used was the Ford GPW. And the GP, they say, was shortened, like shortened, but they just kind of. Yep. Came it up was Jeep. either like general purpose. It was a vehicle. general yeah, purpose was, vehicle. So it wasn't. It, it wasn't armored, and it wasn't for anything specific. It was just general purpose. Point A to point B. So yep. general purpose. I need a GP. I need a Jeep. Jeep. There it is. Yeah. And that's a, the the Willys or Willis, depending on who you talk to. What that you was, talking about, Willis? Willis? The Willis. Exactly. The, the Willys Willis. Overland. So you have a Jeep that's got Willys on the yes, on the, the yes, and this Overland I've seen that and like the fancy the Jeep Overland or like the, one of the higher the ends top, now, but when the they have them, when they have yeah. them in Matt, when you drive by another Jeep driver, do you wave? The yes, you do the, the two little, the two finger. Thing. My poor Jeep's still getting worked on. Aren't you? It's been, it's been <laughs> like three months. So uh, the cost of a war, uh, sorry, the cost of a World War II Jeep at the time. Want to take a guess? And this is what the military. Oh, was three three hundred and sixty four dollars. Is that? I will say, so let me. You got to remember, it came in a box this and you put them world, together. This is World War something. World, world War Two. World War Two. I will say fourteen hundred ninety nine dollars. Well, if we're doing like prices right without going over, Matt would be closer. But it's seven thirty eight seventy four. God damn! I doubled that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I would win. Per unit. The Jeep. Matt, you always win. That yes. was that was the cost per unit. Yeah, That's why so. you get the two fingers. So at that time, Ford was making them. That was the GPW, like like uh Zap was referencing. And then the Willys MB was the the other manufacturer that was making it. So that Ford basically took the plans and everything and basically slapped their engine in it or whatever else. So Ford always stealing shit. Yeah. yeah. So here's a fun fact, PA fun fact. Fun fact. PA produced over 75% of the world's oil in 1881. That makes sense. Titusville. Is that okay? Yep. All right. I thought that was pretty interesting. Did you know there's only one town in PA? Bloomsburg. Interesting. What do you so mean? Everything else, is a, a everything else is a borough or a township mm. or yep. a city. Correct. Inter something. Yeah. I huh. thought that was interesting. Bloomsburg. Bloomsburg, mm. yeah, college or there. If you were from for Spain, it's Bloomsburgo. Bloomsburgo, yep, like Harrisburgo. That's right, Harrisburgo, yeah. Pittsburgo. Winter Wonderland, the song, mm -hmm. is about Central Park in Honesdale, PA. Is that how you say that, Honesdale? I think so. Yeah, yeah. it was written by Dick Smith, and he was a Honesdale native. Mm. That song is about a park up there. I don't know where Honesdale is. I didn't look that up on the map. I have to check out. I'm going to look for Winter Wonderland in Honesdale. I'm going to take, take the fam <laughs> yeah, right. to the Winter Wonderland, it's the their, original. their Central Park. The nearly, three the nearly three billion crayons produced by Crayola every year are all made in PA. All the manufacturing ha happens in the state. You can of tour that facility yeah. there. That's, the that's near uh, Philadelphia, isn't it? Yeah, it's like going up east, that way. Uh, is that out east, east in, in PA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like north of Philly. I actually took uh, the family there. We went on a... Like a little mini vacation there, Sesame Place, when they were real little. They make baseball bats up there, too. Yeah, Easton. Easton, I think that is Northampton County, I think. Oh, okay. Not yeah. to be confused with Northampton. Northampton. Yeah, Northampton. Northampton. Yeah, it yeah. is Northampton. Zap, you might be familiar with this because you live there. Mm. The, Harry, the Harry Packer Mansion in Jim Thorpe. Oh, that is in Jim Thorpe. Yes. That's absolutely correct. It's on the hill right above the what is now the, well, the, the, the courthouse, but yeah, it's right up the hill. So that was used as inspiration for the Haunted Mansion at Disney World. Hmm. Yeah. Cash me outside. How about that? So two more here. Uh, Beaver Stadium is the third largest stadium in the world. That's where Penn State plays. The world. hundred and what thousand? In the world. So after what? Wembley and what? Mm, Michigan's up there. Probably Michigan. I don't know. I don't know what the second one would be, but. Wembley's pretty fucking big. W Wembley is, yeah. I don't know how many it seats or what the. Mm. You know, this is all according to Uncovering PA. And I could be way the hell off on and, Wembley Stadium. And, and, no, because I know Michigan has the largest in in the U.S. Yeah. and they're like 130, 126. Yeah. 
and well, Beaver's like 116. And something. I remember one of the WrestleManias when it was at the Pontiac Silverdome. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The Pontiac Silverdome. That was a cool. You, you should see there's a video on YouTube of the Pontiac Silverdome. Uh, this guy goes into like places that are, you know, falling apart, run down. And that place is just, it's still there. Is it, it really? It, I thought like they half, tore it down. Half demolished. I mean, at this time it was maybe sure. since then, but this guy went in and was like walking around. It's like a ghost town, obviously, in there. Hmm. Where's that? Is that in Detroit? Yeah, Pontiac. Pontiac. Michigan, yeah, they're yeah. saying like um, some of the worst places are the most crime places. There's like five or six of them in Michigan. I believe it's it. like Detroit, Pontiac, Lansing, mm-hmm. like these places. So back to Beaver Stadium, when at capacity, it holds more people than all but three PA cities. Uh, and we know that's Philly, Pittsburgh. I don't know what the third one would be. Allentown? Uh, Maybe Allentown. I don't know. Bethlehem? Be is Bethlehem up there? I don't know with, uh, no. with pop- population. Erie? Allentown's bigger than Erie. Okay. Yeah. It might be Allentown then. Last but not least, the world's first commercial radio station began broadcasting in Pittsburgh again hmm. on November 2nd, 1920. Hmm. And the, the name of the station was KDKA. KDK Radio. First, first in the world. I thought that was wild. That's wild. In of, Pittsburgh. A lot of stuff going on in Pittsburgh. Maybe the like, aliens stands. landed in Pittsburgh. Now, I don't know if this is going to air before or after, but we did the movie Juice. And Zap had a fun fact nope. about um, 40s, Colt 45. Yeah. So we could add that one in there. What was that one? Just in case that they didn't catch it or it didn't come out yet. So there's a bar in Harrisburg called Piccolo's. Mm-hmm. They were at one time the number one retail sales establishment of Colt 45 be, uh, Colt 45 mm-hmm. across the whole damn United States. That's crazy. Now, Piccolo's is on what, Cameron? No, no. that's 17th Street. Yeah. 17th. Yeah, they're also known for their crab cakes. Nope. Like really good crab cakes. Yep. No, you know who had the best crab cakes in Harrisburg? Uh, Purvis Grill. No. It was, it was it it's closed now. It was called the Divot. It was right oh, by your yeah, house. Oh yeah, there. yeah, the Divot. That's Interestingly right. enough, See if you haven't been to the Divot, I know yeah, sleeping on that. I know a woman who used to cook at the Divot. Yeah, well, Joe Beth. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know her. Biggie ups to Joe Beth. Yeah, yeah. She was she was great. I used to go in there all the time. My dad, we, we'd go in there after uh, McDevitt football games on Saturday. They had a great deal. Now this is back in like eighty eight, eighty nine. Two steak dinners, fourteen ninety five. Dang. New York strip steak, baked potato, salad, mm. you know, whatever, side. I'll never forget they had the sign up. Fourteen ninety five. So we used to get that. And I, I love their crab cakes. Yeah. Great, David great had crab some cakes. great crab cakes. Yeah. So that was the the other thing that I had. Some fun facts on. Um Double D's, what was that used to be called? Double D's Tavern. Wasn't that Frank's? Uh, Frank's Tavern. Yeah, that was down that, on that 17th that was on Frank's. the other end. Mm-hmm. Or so 19th Street. 19th Street. Yeah, 19th, 19th and Street. Brookwood. 19th and Brookwood, yeah. And then uh, what? Uh, another place that I think that we went to try to get beer, or 40s at the time, uh, Rusty Nail. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, that got me thinking. I went by uh, a local establishment here. Is uh, It's Arugas now. It used to be, what, Kokomo's. Yep. They had a sign out on Wednesdays, 69 cent wings all day. Oh, that's expensive. Think about back in the day, we had 10 cent wings. Yep. That was like, yep. you know, it's just amazing the price of wings now. That I'll take that a step further. I can remember being a kid and my mom going to the local store and the, I'm saying like the corner store just down the street, Chubb's Market. Right. Mm-hmm. So they would, this was a, they had a little butcher thing and they would chop up the chickens and you could buy the, the wings and the, I'm sorry, you could buy the breasts and the thighs and the legs, or whatever. The wings, they were throwing that shit away. That's wild. They yeah. were absolutely throwing it away. So my mom would say, hey, look, if you're throwing it away, I'll take those wings. She would bake them off, and I would just watch her just strip the meat off of these bones and turn it into like a chicken salad or t- turn it into some kind some of- pot ca- pie or something. Some casserole, yeah, some mm-hmm. pot pie, some shit, but it was free chicken. It was garbage. It was stuff they They're were just, just throwing away. It. It's take amazing. This, take this chicken and eat it. We don't need we don't need this chicken. Well, I just think about all those. I mean, chickens are making for because wings are. I mean, think about how many wings they sell. Like wings are huge now. Like I mean, and they have been for the past what? They're, they're saying say, they're 20, saying that they're like year, twenty plus years. Some sort of years. sludge, like how the McDonald's burger was. They're saying like the wings that you're eating now aren't real. I, Get I don't know if the I, fuck out of here. They're saying where where are they producing these chickens? Where well, are these chickens I'm, I'm coming thinking from? About China. All, all the breast and the other parts, like that. Like, are they selling? 
you know, that many chicken breasts and why do you think, are so why do you think there's so many diseases and weirdness and weird stuff in America? So there, this shit doesn't exist. Look, we can start in a bunch of different places, but so we're going backwards just quickly. Look at the size of a chicken when you go to a Costco or a Sam's Club. Their rotisseries that they're selling to a real yeah. chicken. <laughs> Correct. It looks like those chickens. Those chickens are the size of a turkey. It's like the Rock. Yeah, Ch- chicken version. You know. <laughs> Correct. Saying? Honestly, yeah, a chicken. A chicken, real chicken size. If you see those little ones that like peck at the ground on yeah. like a real farm, that's a real chicken. That's a real chicken. But if you, it, it would look more like a pheasant, right. a real chicken. Yep. And the ones, like you said, you get at Costco. You could feed like 20 people. <laughs> they are yeah. the size of turkeys. Now, to follow up on the the, the, the prices, or, or th- when, you, when you say think about all the wings or whatever that takes. So people are, at least for a while, were into, I want boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And now there's boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And then mm-hmm. there's obviously, for every chicken, you're only getting two wings, unless you're getting some kind of mutant chicken okay. that's yeah. now growing like six mm-hmm. wings. But that notwithstanding, you could go to, around here, a local grocer, Carnes. And you get the pieces that people don't necessarily want to buy, but they're willing to spend at least something on it to get. So you'll get chicken quarters. You'll get legs with the skin connected to the thigh, still with the skin. But it's dirt. It's 59 cents a pound. Yeah, dirt. 49 cents a pound for a good amount of meat with with all the bone and stuff. But, dude, that's again, that's compared to wings, what they're going for per pound versus, you know, breast and stuff like that. Which used to be dirt back in the day. Yeah, it's just this flip-flop. And eventually, I don't know, maybe it's like... You know, loose fitting jeans. Maybe they'll come back. Skinny come jeans. Back no, but uh, it's weird that at Carnes, where do you think they get their chicken from? Local farms? No. 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 China. South Carolina. China. Oh, really? Uh, South yeah. Carolina? Yeah, the chicken's from South Carolina. Because the one day I was like, man, this chicken is great. Is this local? And the guy's like, nah. And he looked at the box. He had the box. You know where they go in and grab it with their big glove? Yeah. He goes to the box. He pulls up the thing. He's like, nah, South Carolina. South Kakalaki. I was like, you didn't even, they don't even know where it's from. You it don't even know. Comes in on you buses and know. trains and planes. And automobiles. Very Automobile. Good. Keep talking. Yeah. No. I got, I got yeah. nothing, man. I got nothing either. Spent. Yeah. Well, this was fun. This was. This was different. We should do this again sometime. I got well, one more thing before we get off air. So just keep talking. Okay. I'm going to have a yeah. special. A special uh somebody calling in this whole episode is special <laughs> today's special yeah it's about to appear today's special <laughs> no. i have somebody wants to pitch something on here do i know this somebody yeah you a know. baseball not lee nick god let's do it all right the answer is yes because i know what he's gonna ask i'm all for it i've been for it he's gonna yeah not lee nick here yeah all right So anyway, let's just get back to talking. And when he calls, I'll put it on. So you'll, we, yeah, because that way it's like you know we can Natural. just we can be cut off. Yeah, yeah. I'll just what the, it in who just, would be calling us at a time like this? Yeah, who could exactly. it be? Mm. Hopefully, he'll call anyone. In a minute, anyone. Bueller. Yeah. Voodoo economics. Oh, so the uh, the Army Navy game. So you were there, and uh, you saw some of the guys from the eighty Olympic team. Oh, actually, yeah. Did you get the picture? I think two of them were from the actual team. It's the guy, the guys on the. But anyway, I showed them some of the um, episode that we had, or when we went, they filmed some right, of the stuff right. they filmed. The guy's like, "Oh man, that's awesome! That's awesome!" He was like, "Was uh, you you rookie there?" And all these. Other, I was like, "Nah, no, nah, them guys weren't there." That's pretty wild. Yeah. Hey, it looks like we got a, a caller here. What? Of course we do. How dare they? Yeah. Not Lee Nick, you there? Wait, is that who is this? Oh. Nutley Nick? Yeah, hold on. Let me let me tap him in here. Nutley, you there? Hey, everybody. There he is. Hey, hey Dr. Nick. <laughs> What's is, going on? Is this Nutley? What's going on, fellas? How you doing? All right. You're kind of hard to understand. Like, you have like uh, some sort of West Virginian accent. <laughs> yeah, right. So I heard you got I something mean, you, you wanted to pitch to Zap. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have this idea about a vintage album review maybe once a month on the podcast. I'm all in. I'm all in. Let's make this happen. And you heard it here. I am. Let's do this. Let's make this happen. Let's make this dream a reality. Yeah, I had some I had some ideas about it. You know, like the Slippery When Wet, it, it launched Whoa. It launched Bon Jovi into <laughs> the, the stratosphere. Um ACDC's Back in Black, the first one with Brian Johnson. That might be a good one. Huh. You know, the Guns Guns and Roses, Appetite for Destruction, they're, they're, that blew them up. 
Absolutely. And you're talking about, so, and, and I like where your head's at. You're using the, the albums that really, of uh, the three bands you just mentioned, those were the albums that made them, absolutely made them. Not necessarily their first albums, but those were right, the albums right. that really launched them. Yeah, I'm all for that. That's a, that's a whole thing on VH1. So you guys think like that'd be that. good? Yeah, that's cool. I dig uh, that. Let's do it, man. Let's make it happen. How about the Alan Parsons Project? Okay. Let's, I don't know that look, one. We just had three great suggestions from Nutley Nick. Let's let, let's start there, and we'll uh, we'll 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 go from there. How about uh, I got a, how about I got another suggestion? Def Leppard's Hysteria. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll be on that. Oh, Hysteria, not Pyromania. Pyromania. What was first, Pyro? Pyromania was first in yeah. '83. You know the song with photograph and everything. I don't uh, want your. Hysteria launched them into another another tax bracket. When of I course, get that yeah. feeling, of course. Mm-hmm. Nutley Pinfield, mm. the guy from uh, MTV. Yeah, yeah, Matt Pinfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Now, Ricky, Ricky Rackman. Uh, Ricky all Rackman. Day. All day. Headbangers Ball. Head, yeah, Headbangers, Headbangers Ball. Ball. Nutley Rackman. That's yes. a great. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoy like that. It. So what you we're, we're, we'll discuss like uh, like where they started or where they were at at this album or what their career was like, just different things. Talk about the songs. Yeah, like I mean, uh, what I had in my head was. All right, say all right. Bon Jovi, slippery when wet. Um, that that really broke them. You know, uh, you give love a bad name was their first single, but then you know when "Live It on, on a Prayer" came out, that just the the album sales went through the roof. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, I know Zap. You're a big Bon Jovi fan, as am I. Yep. And, and I both we both feel that like New Jersey is a better album. One hundred percent. But you know, this is the one. I mean, we could do New Jersey at another time. No, I'm whatever, with you. But... No, I, I like your 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 stream of thought. Again, look, while they might have had later, or um, uh, in this case, later albums that were you know phenomenal, it's the same thing with what I had mentioned. You know, Hysteria versus Pyromania. The we're we're looking at the album that took them from X to Y, and yeah, that makes sense. I mean, these guys, Bon Jovi, as if we're using that. I mean, these guys were they had, of course, their their initial. They had 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. It truly, truly was slippery when wet that just launched them. Absolutely launched them. Dude, I like where your head's at. I like your style. I like your moves. Let's make this happen, dude. Come on in. All right, Nully. Sounds like it's going to be a go. I don't know. Maybe we can go down track by track. What's your favorite one? What's your least favorite? You know, something like that. Did the whole album. Concert, dude, we'll get, we will get down and dirty on this album. Absolutely. So vintage album review. Look for that here in twenty. So the first 24. one would be slippery when wet. Is that is that what we're Sounds calling like it? it? Maybe that's that's absolutely yeah, correct. Yeah. First one. Okay. Slippery when wet. All right, I'll sit in we're for both, that. We're both big, big Bon Jovi fans. There you go. Yeah, I'd, I'd be anxious to hear your your two uh, expertise on that. Because mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I know a little bit about it, but it's not really wasn't fun. Springsteen from Jersey? Springsteen, Sinatra, Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah, they got some good ones there. Nutley. Nutley. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> New Jersey Nutley. New Jersey Nutley. You put my picture up? I will. I got to edit this. We'll, we'll get it in there. Yeah. On the phone, Nutley Nick. <laughs> Actually, the Coming next the next you. time we do this with the uh, with the cameras, I'll just get a Nutley Nick mask. Just wear it. Just wear it. Do the whole cool. thing. Yeah. All there right, Nut- All right, Nutley. We got to wrap this up. I'll I'll Fellas, talk to you. It's been real. Have a great night. You too, yep, brother. Thanks. thanks, brother. Later, man. Later. And, and, and one last, one last thing. Go Mountaineers. Oh, I knew that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, God damn it. I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right, Nully. All right. See Later. You. All right, fellas. Well, that was a fun episode. I thought you said, like, like your dad should have done. Should have wrapped it up. Yeah, right. Seriously. <laughs> oh, too <laughs> yeah, soon. Too soon, right? But, uh, yeah, that was fun, guys. I, I enjoyed uh all the stuff you covered. I yeah, free, same, Freestyle same, Friday is a thing, I think. Fun, yeah, I yeah, like it. Definitely. So we're going to have super happy album Thursdays. Vintage album review. We'll just put that out like this, kind of like yeah, a fun yeah. fun thing to do every now and then. Sure. And I'd like to hear these guys talk albums and stuff. Feature featuring cool. Nutley. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bad we couldn't play the actual music and then comment on it. But. See, that would be fun. Like, how how do we how do we do that? How do we get, get around a lawyer that thing? And you got to get. We have rights. a lawyer. Well, we do have JW. I love that you start with you got to get a lawyer. Yep, <laughs> you got a lawyer up, but you have to get those rights. You, you need. I'm, I'm sure Elon Musk. I mean, could, we, could re- we could reach out to Bon Jovi and say, yes, hey, can we use... Elon Musk, if you're listening, I love you in a non-sexual, non-gay way. Right. I think you are an incredible, incredible human being. Please consider sponsoring this podcast. We would love it. 
Yeah, definitely. I don't think we'd have to work then. If Elon's like, you know what, you guys, <laughs> I like uh, what you're doing. Here, yeah. here's here's three mil. Let's see what you can do with that. We could afford to take the fines if we use music. In other words, if Elon was, we could do this. Us. We could do this part of the basement exactly how you would like it. <laughs> it would be fantastic. I like it like this. We're we're working on it. Zap's got some carpenter skills. I get, and I will be applying those carpenter skills very soon. Yep, yep. So you can hit the laugh track. <laughs> Today's not the day. Yeah, I get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have, but it's on the other page. Just waiting to hear the gunshot. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. one one of them. Yeah, let me see if I can get here. So what were you saying, Zap? You got some carpenter skills. Look, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was yeah. good. That was funny. I, I just, it was in my head for a second. Yeah. I'm thinking of this table that we're thinking of. Right. But once you get a cover on it, it's anything. You know, yeah. fun fact. I gutted my entire house down to stud, bitches. Is it still on? Stu- like, is it still studly? No, okay. it's now manly. Zap That's Vila. awesome. Well, studly and manly. I here. took that whole house down to stud. <laughs> I did all the electrics, all the drywall, all the plumbing, all the all all the everything, everything. Did the floors, the everything. Did you wear that belt? Like all the, <laughs> the, stuff tools the tool in belt. It? No. Yeah. Instead, I just left my tools laying all over the place, and I would lose them. Now right. I have like triplicates of tools because I would I couldn't find them. Shit, I need a tape measure. Yeah. He's buying. I know. I'm do the same shit. Yeah, all you got like four tape. Yeah, then you know, buying something new, and then right. you find it at some odd place where you were working on something and you put it down always or some place where you think like would make sense to put something and then yeah yeah i'll mm. put shit up on a shelf and forget and i'll find it later yeah elf on a shelf yeah, yeah that's all shelf. yeah elf or for our friends celebrating hanukkah mench on a bench that's right mench on that was on a uh, shark tank was it yeah mench on a bench uh, uh it's one chick i know uh she uh well, her and her husband are jewish uh they they do mench on the bench so she does she takes the pictures and does all that shit no way, so, yeah. yeah hilarious yeah it was a shark tank uh thing and they they sponsor or whatever i or, guess uh, it's huge now obviously and people are using it so in in uh in los angeles it's a uh, snoop on a stoop <laughs> snoop mm. on a stoop there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> right they call it so i guess that's it guys you got anything else nope yeah. All right. Thank so, you. Thank you, Freestyle Friday. Yeah. Welcome to 2024. This should be the new year. This is coming out, and we'll definitely be back with some cool true crimes, compelling stories. Got some fun stuff coming up for sure. Don't forget to check out our Vintage Cinema Review that comes out every other Monday. And I guess that's it for now, so we'll catch you where. On the flip side, if we don't see you sooner, we'll see you later. Peace. Happy New Year. Thanks for hanging out in the old dirty basement. If you dig our theme music like we do, check out the Tsunami Experiment. Find them on Facebook. Their music is available streaming on Spotify and Apple and where great music is available. You can find us at Old Dirty Basement on Facebook and Instagram and at Old Dirty Basement Podcast on TikTok. Peace. We out 5,000. <laughs>